Welcome back. You're watching Holy Land Uncovered. The Together Plan is an international organization which aims to empower communities in the former Soviet Union, and we are delighted to host UK director of this organization, Deborah Bruner, and her beautiful daughter, Abigail, a volunteer in the Together Plan, plus Svi Shefet, a 90-year-old who has fought in uh, Belarus during World War II and himself a freedom fighter and an all-around Fantastic man. Welcome all of you to the show thank and you. thank you for coming. First of all, I would like to start with you, Svi. You are, you are from uh, Slonim. And did you grow up uh, going to the synagogue that we're talking about? The great synagogue of Slonim, this is the monument. This is the gravestone of the community. The, uh, it was built in 1642 by the community. Mm. The community here of the Slonimites here in Israel, we decided in order to preserve the building, the synagogue, we have to do something. Mm -hmm. And then we decided that we have to ask for a permission uh, at the authorities, at the Soviet authorities, to make a museum of the heritage of the, of, of, uh, the, uh, of the Jewish heritage of Belarus in order to preserve it. And it took about several years, and we got the permission from the Soviet Union, from Moscow. And then it, uh, the relationship between Israel and the Soviet was uh, erupted, mm -hmm. and we have no, and we, we have no connection more with, with the Soviet Union right. until ni 1990. Our first uh, tour to the roots to Slonim. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were about 50, 50 Slonimite people, and we have seen what is going on there. And then we made a, a contact connection with one of the famous architects of Belarus, uh, Leonid Levin, who was one of the architects of the uh, memorial of the government memorial site of Belarus in Khatin. And, uh, and I, I met him, and we decided that we have to do something. And I invited him to to Israel, and uh, we planned how to uh, start to reconstruct uh, the synagogue. And we started to reconstruct it. We had a film. And at this and point, did you meet uh, these fine uh, women right here? Uh, for, first of all, it's beautiful. I see you like having memories of being there. Just in your describing it, it's very, uh, you know, profound to hear you explain since it. Then yeah. I am all, I am all the time. I am busy, and I am looking how to reconstruct to to find a way to reconstruct the synagogue. Wow, it's so beautiful. And so let's uh, let's bring you ladies in. And so how did this, you're from the UK, how did you, what is the connection between you and this particular town in Belarus? Yeah, good question. Um, so my relationship started with Belarus 10 years ago, um, where I um, had some Belarusian children who came from a place called Mozir and Mogilev, mm -hmm. come and stay with me. Uh, as part of a program that are, um, where children were coming more for respite care than anything else. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, but these were Jewish children, um, but they were very disconnected to their Judaism. Um, and I started to inquire as to why this was. And so I s got slowly sucked into the Jewish world of Belarus. Uh, mm -hmm. I traveled out there. Um, I started a program twinning a, a synagogue in the UK with, with uh, a community in the north of Belarus. And then slowly I realized that there was an awful lot of work to do. Uh, registered the Together Plan uh, and started uh, as part of that building a youth program, uh, which we call Youth for Youth, mm -hmm. um, which is um, we have an online virtual community where we bring young people from different um, countries uh, across the globe together, um, which is why Abigail. So yes, yeah, so and just so of course, obviously, like mother, like daughter, it sounds like the uh, the do-gooder gene runs uh, very, very strong. How was your, you know, what was your experience, you know, with the, you know, the the people that that were taken in and what you learned about the culture and the you know the Jewish history of that region well obviously what well, when they came I was only 10 <laughs> and so. you didn't have a choice do your homework and now help me <laughs> <laughs> no but they were lovely they were completely different to any kind of at the time I just joined the youth movement in the UK mm -hmm. with a group of young people who had who were very kind of 
at one with their Judaism. They knew exactly what they were doing. They knew where they came from. And then these people came, and it was all very unsure. And we took them to shul, and we took them to a summer program at our synagogue, and it was all very new to them. And then I went out for the first time properly this year, and um, we held a bar mitzvah at the great synagogue in Slonim. Mm -hmm. And I helped lead music there. And we led a symposium where we would kind of teach each other and learn from each other, all young people. Um, and to see kind of how they've grown and how what the Together Plan does has affected them is really quite amazing. It really is such a great, I mean, a, a, a fantastic name. And what is, in your opinion, you know, going to this area, I mean, 1642, a Baroque structure, like when you went there and you saw the synagogue, what was, you know, the feeling seeing this you know, symbol really in disrepair. Yeah, um, yeah, it was quite overwhelming actually. Um, one of the projects that we um, run uh, is uh, working with survivors of the Minsk ghetto. Um, so there are, it's quite extraordinary, there are still survivors of, these were also partisans like mm -hmm. Svi, mm -hmm. uh, people who escaped the ghetto uh, and then survived living in the forest and uh, as partisans, which is not a story that's well known well, and not Daniel talked Craig about. Exactly, that's properly. how people know about it, mm -hmm. right. Um, but there is an awful lot to be talked about and learned from those stories and from those people. And so there are still survivors of the Minsk ghetto living on the territory of Minsk. Mm -hmm. And we've just translated a book of their stories and of their memories. And so then to find ourselves at this synagogue where there were, um, I mean, amazing stories. So the, the building actually plays quite a significant role because it was in the ghetto. So the building has survived and so many people didn't survive. And so it, it really is, as Svi says, a, a really important memorial to those people right. who, who perished, but also to the people who survived, mm -hmm. but also to the people who are out in the diaspora, who have, you know, trying to find their way back to who they are in their own identity. Right. And it's my belief, and it's the, the, all of the people who are involved in the Together Plan, that if you can start bringing all this back together, that's very empowering and it's very powerful in terms of Jewish well, identity. And there's also there's power in numbers. I mean, part of the tenets of Judaism is Absolutely. you're with a group, and Absolutely. that's part of the, you know, the whole experience. Yeah. So since you've started doing this plan, how what has it been like for you to have this, you know, beautiful man who is really you know able to give a first-hand account of what it was like there at the you know. It's extraordinary. The war. I mean, it really is. I feel um, I feel completely uh, honored to have the. Um, well, to be able to meet with Svi, and it's this program that has, has led me to Svi, um, and it is really like pieces of a puzzle. Each time I go to Belarus, I find somebody else. Um, there is a, another organization in, in the UK now called the Foundation for Jewish Heritage who, are, who have flagged up um, the importance of heritage assets through the Hebrew, um, uh, Hebrew University here. Right. So it's, everybody's doing their piece, and when you put it all together, you find this is really interesting and you start re replace it. Well, it's like taking, making a quilt. It feels like you're making, you're yeah. taking a piece and it becomes this beautiful and it's like quilt almost. It's a history that yeah. you're putting back together again that were getting lost yeah. and now are not getting lost. And hopefully we'll be able to connect to people who will help us to Re, you know, restore this building for something yeah. of, of very um, great importance to the Jewish community. Fantastic. Well, thank you guys so much. We're going to return uh, after a quick commercial break. Hold on one second. We're going to be right back. Yeah. After the break, we're going to continue this conversation. Okay, so stay tuned to Holy Land Uncovered. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back. Now we're going to continue uh, our panel and our discussion of the uh, the Slonim Synagogue with uh, with uh, Deborah Bruner, Abby Bruner, and Svi Shefet. Hello. And you were telling me uh, during the commercial break, you know, in 1990, you know, the the building was vandalized, but you were involved in the you know rebuilding of the synagogue even in the 90s before you met these two ladies. Yeah, because because I am the chairman of the Association of the Slonim Jews here in Israel, mm -hmm. and. Uh, and because I am, uh, I am in love with this synagogue. Mm. Not only me, but I have done everything possible to to uh, to reconstruct this synagogue in order to leave it as a monument, to leave it as a, a as a memory. Of uh, the of the Jewish community and of 
of the Jewish people in Belarus. Mm -hmm. And for you, uh, you know, what is this something that um, you know you think you'll continue as you continue to uh, you know get older? Is this kind of your your passion as well, or you're going to get a day job and a day <laughs> career not related to the Jewish <laughs> diaspora? Well, um, currently I'm about to start my own kind of journey in music right. so ah. that's my thing uh -huh. but I will, of course I'll stay involved I have quite a few ideas of how to develop um, the youth side of the together plan and how right. to connect like the UK and everywhere else right, right, with right. Belarus because obviously it's it's undescribable what it's like there yeah um, it's as if it's kind of just been like stopped and nothing's developed for about 30 or 40 right, it's like years. Right, frozen in time. Now talk yeah. about the, there's something with, a, you know, using like something with the tombstone as well. Yes. Tell us about this. So that was a project um, that I was involved with um, and we're still connected to it um, in Brest in the south of, of the country. Mm -hmm. um, tombstones, this is not um, unique to, to Brest. This happened all over the, the Soviet Union. Um, headstones, so Matsevot, were taken off of um, cemeteries, cemeteries right. um, and used as, as um, building materials wow. um, th after the war, because no more Jews, so hey, who needs the, the cemeteries? Who's there to look after them? Um, and so a lot of gravestones were taken off, so even in death you couldn't be left alone, uh, hmm. and used as building materials because the For Jews... For homes, not, nothing to do with Judaism synagogues, literally no, used literally to build homes. in roads and in pathways. Wow, and Ooh, in, gives you chill. Yeah. Wow, it gives me chills. Uh, and so we have a connection to the Jewish community in Brest, in the south of Brest-Litovsk, so it's, it's a very significant part of the world, and uh, of the Jewish world. And um, uh, yeah, these uh, headstones started to reappear. People were finding them and returning them to, so to the Jewish returned. community. So they're, they're being returned, but they're now piled up, hundreds of them. Um, and so there is a hope that at some point a memorial will be built. And the territory that was the cemetery in Brest is unmarked. So it doesn't say that it was a cemetery. So there is a need for markings. And Begin came from, from Brest. I mean, you know, the founding fathers of Israel came, came from, from Belarus. Wow. Uh, and, you know, Heim Weizmann, you know, really important, significant people to mm -hmm. this country. Mm -hmm. And so there is a connection there that yeah. needs to be made. So we'd love to be able to get those headstones read and, and digitized and archived and, and for the community there to have ownership of that project. Correct, correct. Because people will then find them. So for you, you know, listen, you've, uh, you know, it's been many, 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 many years since you went through, you know, what you went through, but does it, for you to see what is uh, happening, what does it mean for Jews that come from the region and you in particular that people are honoring and remembering, you know, the beautiful culture of uh, tell, Belarus? What I want to tell that we have planned together with the uh, uh, local authorities of Slonim and uh, of the district uh, how to reconstruct uh, uh, as a museum of heritage of the jewelry, of Belarusian jewelry. Everything was okay, but there was no budget. There was no money. Like always. It's always a budget, right. Yeah. And then s several months ago, so we get uh, uh, the news about uh, the Jewish Foundation and, and they all together that they, they start, they take the responsibility to uh, reconstruct and to find the budget uh, all over the world. I, st I tried I tried in all the organization of the Jewish organization all over the world for, for 20 years. And have you been uh, successful in being able to help, you know, raise money for this? Is it, is it easier, you know, you know, being in the UK? What is right, I, in my, I believe in what is right and I believe it will come. You have only Amen. patience. And hope. Patience and patience. not to leave it and it will come. Never forget, right? But, yeah. It's really profound what you're doing. I mean, what is it like? How do you cover every synagogue in that area? Are you? Is it a little overwhelming? Like, I know you're starting with one, but I'm sure there's 
many others, even ones that you may not even know about. Oh, no, there are many. Um, and as we're growing as a charity, we are finding more and more. Right. Um, yeah, it is overwhelming, but you've got to start somewhere and hoping that, well, now we're here. So hopefully, you know, we can spread the word and have a, a louder voice, and you're helping us with uh. that. Um, and, and the word will get out there. And, in, 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 and I think the fact that we're trying to, well, we are successfully bringing young people into the program, um, it's... It starts a whole different kind of dialogue. Hundred percent, and it's really important. And that's about building the future for, for for the Jewish community globally, not not just here, everywhere. Everywhere. Yeah. Thank you all very it's much. Not, yes. It's, it's not only a synagogue. It's a symbol. It it's it's a memori memorial site for the Belarusian Jewry, and we, if we will not make it, so it will disappear. Wow, you are an amazing, amazing man. Amazing man, and thank you guys so much for coming on, especially on your holiday. So head back out to the beach in the over 33 degree temperatures. <laughs> thank you all, and thank, thank you. you. Pleasure, no, pleasure. No, no. Uh, we're going to take a short break. Please don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with more.